In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about the Kyoto blockchain. If you're an existing investor or it's something that you're considering investing, you're going to want to watch this video to find out all of the information that you need to know because there have been some changes and they are pretty significant. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Now, I appreciate that it's been a while since I did my last video on the Kyoto blockchain or in fact on any project for that matter because I've been busy building my own. Stick around till later on and you'll find out a little more about that. But for now, I'm wanting to get across just to what exactly is happening on this big ecosystem because it has come on a lot in the past few months. Now I'm on the website at the moment and nothing's really changed from their fundamental foundation so there's still going to be a regenerative finance blockchain. They still have plenty of solutions when it comes to sustainability and the carbon offset market. That's something that they've been looking to tackle. But most importantly, if you're watching this video, it's likely that you've invested in this project before and there have been some significant changes that we should talk about. Now the most important thing to note and first off is that the Kyoto team have now put in place a new chief operating officer. So she will now be taking over the main operational part of the protocol. As you may know, the founders of the project have been looking for a series of C-suite executives who can manage operations. And I believe in Q1 next year, they'll be looking to appoint a new CEO in order to run the entire ship. But for now, we've got a COO and then they've already got a chief technical officer, which I believe his name is Duncan. So according to this article, Yenling has a background in finance and tech startups, which is obviously very important for this particular project. And has previously been CEO at other organizations like Algomi, an award-winning fintech company. Now the interesting thing here is that the team have decided to go after traditional people in the market. They've not going after oh we'll just get someone who knows what blockchains do or something like that and like let's just leave this to kind of amateurs they've gone after people who are in the real world who are potentially in financial services industries and places like that to actually bring them on board to add some stability and structure to this very large ecosystem that wasn't the only recent big announcement and that's because the Kyoto Foundation have actually done a huge acquisition of Kyoto coins in a sum of 120 million now something to remember is that on the Kyoto blockchain there was originally a touted 1 billion possible tokens that could ever be minted and put in into circulating supply. When you put that into context, there's 120 million of those, which is over a tenth of the entire tokens. They're gonna to be put into the foundation and locked up. And that's essentially what this news article covers. Now, the other interesting thing in this article is it shows exactly how many tokens are actually in that foundation. And according to this now, that foundation will have 316 million of the tokens. Now they're endeavoring to keep those tokens because they wanna keep the value of the blockchain token alive because if everybody just dumped the tokens, the tokens would be worth nothing and people wouldn't see any long-term value in holding them for incremental value. But this is really good for anyone who's an investor because it means that a portion of those will be ring-fenced and it means that you as an investor, if you're just investing in the Kyoto Protocol, maybe you had pre-sale tokens or maybe you're gonna get in on launch, then you should have less to worry about when it comes to price and liquidity. Of course, time will tell how this will happen. There are gonna be people queuing up to sell tokens because this project has been running for well over 18 months and by the time it launches we're then going to be into a mode of seeing whether people actually sell stuff but the launch price will still be at 33 cents which is what the team originally agreed so that means that they have a huge holding of that and that means on launch you can probably expect it to not dump ridiculously hard remember a lot of people who got pre-sale tokens as well are also vested and i'm going to talk about that later on in another bullish update it actually mentions here in the article specifically that the foundation will look to lock up its bolstered supply via smart contract reserving eight percent specifically for liquidity purposes. So that reduces the available supply of Kyoto by about 120 million tokens to the public or anyone looking to invest in it. So again, this is really good because it almost feels like a deflationary measure, even though it's not really a burn of tokens, but it's still very bullish for the protocol. Now onto the next important announcement. We have a new white paper. We're gonna have a brief look in a minute. We're not gonna go through it in depth as I always do. We're just gonna focus on some key bits that I think are really important for you to know. But essentially they now have a white paper, which is actually not called the white paper at all. It's called the green paper. You can access this from the homepage on the website at the top via green paper and this will take you into the brand new white paper. Now this is very very new indeed but this will feel like a more warranted offering to explain to people how big this ecosystem really is. So there's a whole host of sections explaining about the voluntary carbon market, how the Kyoto blockchain will work, how their sustainability elements will work, how they're going to look to clean up the planet and use fees from the blockchain to essentially do that. They also talk about some other parts of their ecosystem that they have as well, the Arboretum, 
which is kind of like a sustainable NFT platform for creators, all this kind of stuff. So there's loads of detail in it. I'm not gonna go through and try and explain to you why the Kyoto blockchain will change the world, because I think it really will. It's the first of its kind, and it's not necessarily going after being the most technologically advanced thing in the world. It's not doing ghost DAG validations and you know 15 billion transactions a second, but what it's trying to do is add sustainability and a focus around sustainability to a very otherwise energy hungry industry. We know the carbon credit marketplace is massive. It's a predicted value of about 50 billion by 2030. But that's huge. There's just so much amount of money that could be going through this platform when people get involved. There are some really cool sections in here. It talks about the Kyoto blockchain specifically, about how they do stuff, the carbon standard. There's got this stuff about DMRV, which is their digital measurement reporting and verification framework. Again, it's all very technical, so I don't really want to spend too long going through all of the guff around this stuff, but it is there. I'd recommend reading it if you're an investor in it. And the most important thing that I wanted to point out is the change to the tokenology. Now this is really important and the main reason for this is because they've actually reduced the overall supply of tokens in their ecosystem by 25%. So originally there were 1 billion tokens that were going to be available and now that has changed to 750 million. So based on what's happened with the Kyoto Foundation, based on them revamping and looking at how much money is in there, what they can actually offer, there's actually much less tokens that are going to be minted in supply. Now the beauty of this is the price of your token that you were given, which would have been 33 cents when you purchased them in pre-sale or what you were promised to take over to the blockchain if you invested even earlier in the process, none of that will actually change. It will still be worth 33 cents on launch. I'll talk about why the price is less important later, but the number of tokens that are possibly going to be in supply for other people to dump on you is much, much less. And with the Kyoto Foundation queuing up a massive portion of those as well, this is pretty bullish stuff. Now, what I like about this white paper is it breaks down everything. It says, this is the max supply that can ever happen. This is what it's going to be migrated across. So this is what previous investors, plus the staking rewards that people have got for being early investors, it's going to equate to this many tokens. That there's going to be an initial circulating supply that's available on launch that people can have, and the rest of those tokens are going to enter the ecosystem as they're earned by node operators, validations, all this kind of stuff. So this is pretty, pretty damn cool. It does break down the, the distribution here. What's interesting is the token distribution. So a big portion of that supply initially is actually off and into the foundation, which is great for you as an investor because the foundation are not there to sell the token. They are there to preserve the life of the blockchain. It does also mention in here about deflationary mechanics, which is interesting. So they talk about how they're gonna control the supply of the Kyoto assets by doing planned token burns, starting with 1 million Kyoto to be burned over the first year. Now, what's really interesting as well about the reduction in the supply of tokens is how fast you might get them if you were a pre-sale investor. Now, for me, this is very different. If I go to the vesting schedule, you will see very quickly that they have changed the timing for this. And instead of it now being 35% of all of your tokens vested over five years, this has now been changed to 18 months for 100% of all of your tokens. So they are accelerating how fast you'll be able to get your tokens out of the platform because they are bullish enough on the platform and the use cases for the tokens. It does mention here that 93.5% of the circulating supply that goes in at the start will be locked in a staking contract for 18 months. That's essentially the vesting schedule and it's been locked up. And then the remaining 6.5% of that will be ring fenced for liquidity. So this is giving people an opportunity. I mean, I remember Brian Legend, the, the twat himself, laughing about this when he heard that they were doing this over five years and he was saying his fake blockchain Vulcan um, was going to do it in two years or whatever and now this blockchain is proving that actually it's more than a match for most blockchains although I think anything could have been a match for Brian Legend's shit show. But this is really bullish because you're going to get your tokens a lot earlier you're going to get all of your tokens a lot earlier and they're going to intrinsically be worth more just based on the relative supply being reduced by 25%. But of course, when it comes to price, the thing we always have to remember is that it's an open market. It might be 33 cents on launch, but all of a sudden, that price could be up, it could be down. It depends on people's actions on a launch of a project, when tokens and coins become available, all of that stuff. So these are just things that you have to bear in mind. It also does mention about staking. Now this is always useful to know, but when you use the Kyoto Wallet.io platform and you actually stake your tokens, your Kyoto tokens, you will receive competitive 20% APY for the first year and 18% in year two. It's not ridiculous, not promising you 9,000 million percent APY. Now just one quick reminder is the airdrop. 
So they're still doing the 1 million Kyoto airdrop. They're still looking to do that. The way to get involved in this is to join their ZD platform. There are a series of bounty tasks that you need to do. You essentially need 1500 XP points from the platform in order to qualify for some kind of airdrop. And all you have to do for that is small bounty tasks like sharing Twitters, doing a YouTube video, writing a Medium article, whatever it is. So I might submit this video and see if I can get some free points if there's any options there. Don't forget to do that. Check out that Zeely and obviously get involved where you feel you can. But the last thing to tell you about the blockchain is that there is a slight delay to when they're going to launch. So there is a roadmap in the white paper. You can have a look at it. It's on their website as well. They're essentially launching in Q1 2024. They haven't stated exactly when. They've kept things to quarters for now. What you will find though is that on the 15th of December, the test net will actually go live. So you'll be able to then use the platform, explore it, test things out, see what parts of the ecosystem there are. And I have no doubt that by using that part of the platform on that test net, you'll be able to potentially earn some more from airdrops and things like that. So I recommend having a look at the platform, seeing what they're doing. This isn't like some dodgy little blockchain that's been stood up. They're appointing a proper C-suite set of executives. They're fully transparent about this stuff. It's probably one of few projects that I've trusted from start to finish. They haven't steered us wrong yet, and I don't think they will. They all have strong backgrounds in financial services and understanding tokenomics, money, how all that kind of stuff works, which is more than can be said for most projects. Now, I mentioned earlier in the video that I've been really, really busy, and that's why I haven't been doing as many videos, and that's because I've been standing up my own crypto project itself. So I've actually built a platform, and I'm working with a couple of devs to do this. It's a player versus player gaming platform, which is gonna enable people to play against each other and against a proverbial house, made up of other players on various different games with some huge chances to win fees from $100 to $1,000 to a $1 million every single game. It's an interesting platform. I think you're gonna to wanna to find out more about it. So stick around on the channel if you haven't already. I'll be dropping more details about that and a dedicated video real soon. But until then, hopefully you found some form of value in this video for Kyoto. I put a video on the screen that I'd recommend you watch next. But apart from that, have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll chat to you in the next video.